Welcome to the Boat Harbor Remediation Project video. This video will provide an overview of the history, planning, and next steps of the project with the focus on managing waste within the on-site containment cell. Boat Harbor is located on the Northumberland Strait next to Pictou Landing First Nation. Known as Osaig in Mi'kmaq, Boat Harbor was a tidal estuary where an arm of the Northumberland Strait extended to meet the mouth of the Inland Harbor. In 1967, the provincial government allowed Boat Harbor to receive liquid waste from nearby industrial sources. It was then closed off from the ocean. Since then, it has been maintained purely to treat wastewater. After many years, this has made Boat Harbor into a polluted lake and a significant environmental concern. Nova Scotia is committed to cleaning up Boat Harbor and the harbor has stopped receiving liquid waste. As the Mi'kmaq saying goes, let us work together and clean up Boat Harbor. The remediation project's goal is to return Boat Harbor to a tidal estuary. With this remediation, Pictou Landing First Nation hopes that the community will eventually re-establish its relationship with the water and land of Oseg. Planning and design for the project began in earnest in 2015 and remediation efforts are scheduled to start after environmental approvals are obtained. Following federal and provincial approvals, Nova Scotia will remediate the effluent treatment facility and associated lands by removing hazardous and non-hazardous waste and wastewater. The existing dam and causeway along Highway 348 will be removed. A bridge will be installed to allow the return of tidal conditions. The pipeline and buildings will be decommissioned and in some cases removed. The Boat Harbor Effluent Treatment Facility contains well over 1 million cubic meters of contaminated sludge and sediment. The project team considered three options to manage the waste from the remediation. The first, option A, was off-site disposal at a facility licensed to receive the waste, including the use of Northern Pulp Landfill at Abercrombie Point. The second, option B, was developing a new containment cell either off-site or on the treatment facility's lands. And the third, option C, was to use the existing containment cell already on site. The three options were compared based upon filters of public concern, approvability, timeliness, environmental impacts, and risk. Option A was not chosen as an available waste management method as Nova Scotia Environment confirmed that no landfill in the province could accept this waste under their current approval other than the containment cell already on site. The amount of waste to be removed and relocated would amount to 18,000 truckloads. Because there is no approved facility in Nova Scotia, it would have to be transported to Quebec. This option had negative impacts on timeliness, environmental impacts, risk, and cost. Option B's approach included developing a new containment cell either off-site or on the lands of the treatment facility using the existing settling basins. The establishment of a new landfill or containment cell in Nova Scotia had a significant impact on project timelines as the approval process for a new cell would take about six to eight years. In addition, the approval of a new site was not a certainty as there is an existing approved site to take the Boat Harbor sludge. An on-site location was looked at as it would be located on a disturbed area within provincial land and makes use of the facility's access road. It still would require an extensive approval process. This option was eliminated as the proposed location did not meet limits of the property boundary and overall Boat Harbor footprint. The project team concluded that using the existing containment cell already on site would be the best path forward for waste removal. The existing containment cell has already been receiving sludge coming from the treatment facility since 1996. A vertical expansion to the cell is required, but the footprint of the cell will not grow. This option was most favorable through the filters used for comparing options. In addition to these three approaches, Incinerating the waste was not considered because of the common public opposition to incineration on other sites within the province, as well as a significant long-standing concern over air quality in the local environment. The project plans to dispose of the solid waste from Boat Harbor in this existing 6.7 hectare containment cell. 
The footprint of the existing cell is quite large, covering an area the size of over 12 football fields. Though the existing cell has been working as planned up until this point, some improvements will be made in order to place and dewater the sludge in a one-step operation, including increasing its height to accommodate all the waste, enhancing the structure's baseliner system by removing the existing drainage system to expose its existing clay baseliner, installing a geosynthetic clay liner, installing a flexible membrane liner, installing a sand cushioning layer, installing geotextile, and installing a collection system made of stone drainage and piping that collects excess water that carries any leftover substances, known as leachate. When the waste fills this improved containment cell, its lining system will collect and manage any leachate as it funnels into the collection system and allow for long-term off-site disposal. You can see how thick the liner is compared to viewing the same structure in person. The improved containment cell can hold all of the project waste, although construction and demolition debris will be shipped somewhere else. It will keep precipitation out of the waste storage area, control the release of landfill gases, and allow workers to better maintain it long term. If more storage is needed for the waste, the structure's side slope can be modified to provide additional capacity needed. The cover of the containment cell is made up of a sand layer, flexible membrane liner, drainage layer, and topped with a topsoil and grass covering, all designed to help prevent rainwater and other precipitation from leaking into the waste containment area, which would cause more leachate. The team can add other kinds of plants, such as short shrubs that help the containment cell fit nicely into the surrounding tree line. When it rains, the water would run off the cap or be caught in the cell's cap and diverted from reaching the waste. These layers all work to prevent rainwater from reaching the stored waste and creating extra leachate. After the containment cell is closed, the project team will manage any leachate that is generated by collecting and hauling it off-site for disposal at an industrial or municipal wastewater treatment facility licensed to handle the waste. The Boat Harbor Remediation Project Team will consistently monitor groundwater quality and how water moves, surface water quality, leachate quality and amounts, and landfill gas. The team will regularly report its findings to Nova Scotia Environment as well as perform inspection and maintenance duties of the site itself. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the Boat Harbor Remediation Project and especially the plans to use the containment cell. If you have any questions, please direct them to boatharbor at novascotia.ca or visit www.novascotia.ca slash boatharbor and we will be happy to respond.